Hi everyone, this is Neil Writer here, also known as the Wax Whisperer. Thank you for joining me in my latest video. We have here a patient who attended with bilateral, fully occluding and impacted, soft, mushy earwax and dead skin. They just reported symptoms in this their right ear, but as you may have just seen, their left ear is also extremely blocked. Um, just commencing with microsuction, and I'm just trying to detach this um, very, as I said, very sticky and um, soft, mushy, glutinous wax and keratin off the canal wall. Because of the consistency, it's causing the inside of the suction probe to get blocked as the wax is getting suctioned up. Uh, it's clinging and sticking inside the suction probe. And in a moment, I'm going to instill some medical grade olive oil spray just to help lubricate the inside of the suction probe and also to change the consistency of this 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 build up to make it bind together um, if you've been watching my channel for a while you know i like to make some food analogies and when i use olive oil um, spray in the ear i always make the comparison um, of it being similar to an egg in a potato cake or fish cake recipe for example it helps to bind the ingredients together and that's what the oil generally does in the ear. It helps to bind this and change the consistency of this wax. So you can see that already. It's taking shape already. Um, this plug of wax and uh, soft keratin is enveloped by a layer of skin. You can see that skin around the edge. And that skin is a freshly shedded layer of skin that's dyed. And it's uh, in normal circumstances, that skin would begin to migrate and move sideways out of the ear. But because of how blocked this ear is, that skin's just going to attach itself to the plug and eventually become one with the plug. Um, it'll form uh, and it's widen this plug even further. So with the oil, it's softened that more lateral layer of soft wax and skin. And this is the more medial layer. So this hasn't been exposed to the oil. So in a moment, I'm going to put some more oil in. Um, the average length of an adult human ear canal is approximately uh, 2.6 centimeters and so this patient's ear canal was actually blocked right from the entrance to their eardrum um, and where we're working at now is probably around a centimeter away from the eardrum so we have already removed a substantial amount of um, wax and skin as you can see i've just put some more oil in and i'm actually performing the procedure whilst the oil's in situ Previously, I used to allow the oil to sit for a few minutes and then get the patient to tilt the head in the opposite direction so the oil can drizzle out. Um, but I'm finding more and more often performing the procedure whilst the oil's in situ is far more effective. The only slight difficulty that that poses me is when the oil is in the air and you're suctioning and you're vacuuming, that oil is also getting vacuumed up the tube and it can cause um, some blurring. So quite often I need to come back out, just wipe the lens of the endoscope and re-enter the ear. And I'm just working at the roof of the ear canal there. I still can't see the eardrum. And as such, I'm just approaching just a bit with uh, a bit of caution here because we don't know exactly how thick this final layer of wax and skin is. And there's always a potential of me over inserting the suction probe and making direct contact with the eardrum, which was the last thing we want to do. We, it'll not only be very uncomfortable for the patient, you always then run the risk of perf perforating the eardrum, and making matters far worse. So I'm just looking for a bit of daylight, really. I just want to see the eardrum. And once I, I can visualise some of the eardrum, and I can just see it there to the left, there's a little blue tinge, and that's the eardrum just appearing and resurfacing. This now that gives me a much better idea of how thick this final layer of wax is. I've just put some more drops on and I'm hoping the drops can now penetrate in between the wax um, and the eardrum so it can help loosen this wax off the eardrum because it is impacted. And slowly but surely now uh, we're seeing more and more of the eardrum. So this eardrum's um, seeing daylight for the first time in a very long time I suspect. This patient does suffer from chronic impaction of wax and dead skin. They last attended June last year, so approximately nine months. Um, prior to that, they attended a year earlier. 
and they are in their early 30s and it's just been in the last few years that they've began to experience issues with wax and uh, dead skin buildup. They do suffer from very mild otitis externa. So otitis externa is somewhat an umbrella term um, and it describes either uh, an infection or inflammation of the outer ear. So the outer ear is made up of the pinna. The pinna is the satellite dish made up of cartilage that um, we have on either side of our heads. The ear canal, also known as the external auditory meatus, and the outermost layer of the eardrum. So the eardrum is made up of three membranes. The outer membrane is a layer of skin uh, uh, made up of epithelial skin cells, and that's the same skin that lines the inner two-thirds of the ear canal. The innermost membrane of the eardrum is um, a mucosal layer. So a mucosal layer is similar to the skin uh, found in our uh, upper respiratory tract, so our nose, for example. And then the middle layer of the eardrum is made up of fibrous and connective tissue, and that's what gives the eardrum its rigidity and its strength and its elasticity. Um, so if you've got an infection involving one of those uh, three parts of the outer ear, we call that otitis. So otitis, um, it just means ear infection, and externa is the location. So in this case, externa is the outer ear. If you have otitis media, uh, you have an infection of the middle ear. It's very seldom I hear the term otitis interna. Uh, I'm sure it does exist when you've got an infection of the inner ear, but typically those infections are labelled uh, more specifically. For example, if you have uh, labyrinthitis, for example, which is an infection of the, the labyrinth. So the labyrinth is the organ of hearing and the organ of balance combined. So if any of you weren't aware, the organ of hearing called the cochlea is connected to the organ of balance, so the vestibular system, and the vestibular system consists of three semicircular canals, and they all form one structure, and that structure is called the labyrinth. So if you suffer from labyrinthitis, um, it's normally infection of the, the labyrinth, so uh, the, the cochlea and the vestibular organ, but and also the auditory nerve, for example, um, and the vestibular nerve. So the hearing nerve, what we call the auditory nerve, and the vestibular nerve, the nerve of balance, are intertwined. And together they are called the, it's called the eighth cranial nerve. Um, so the, the full name of the nerve is the audio vestibular nerve, audio vestibular cochlear nerve. There's many different names given to it, actually. So the eardrum's fully visible, and what I'm trying to do now is peel away some of this soft wax keratin off the side of the ear canal. So the skin is just, it's not going to come away by itself. The patient does report itchiness in the ear. So in the majority of our, uh, our ears, this skin, as it dies and sheds, it just moves sideways out of the ear. We call that the epithelial migration. So it's the outermost layer of skin, the epithelial skin cells, which makes up the epidermis, which is the outer um, layer of skin. Those skin uh, cells eventually die and shed. And our ears have evolved over millennia to self-cleanse the ear of the dead skin cells, so the exfoliated skin cells. If it wasn't able to do that, then all of our ears would be blocked full of dead skin cells. And all of us will need our ears to be cleaned on a regular basis. So the ear has evolved. So as this skin dies and it sheds, it just moves sideways out of the ear like a conveyor belt um, until it eventually exit the ear. And as these skin cells migrate out of the ear, any earwax sitting on the surface is also expelled. Um, the rate of migration, uh, it varies from individual to individual, and it's between 1.5 millimetres and 3 millimetres a month. So if you round off the average ear canal as being 3 centimetres, a piece of sk dead skin that has died and shedded on the middle of the eardrum it will take it approximately um, 10 months for it to expel itself out of the ear. So that's just an interesting fact. If ever you, you are on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire and you are very, ever quizzed about the rate of epithelial skin migration from the ear, well, you know the answer. <laughs> 
So it's just some soft sticky wax here. We've got to be careful. This is the anterior recess we're working on and the ear canal in this region is extremely sensitive. I can't stress that enough. The skin here is only one layer, whereas the skin on the outer third of the ear canal is made up of three layers. So typical skin has three, three layers. The epidermis, which is the outermost membrane, and that's what helps to protect the, the rest of the skin. Uh, the dermis, which is the middle layer, and a, a subcutaneous layer, which is made up of insulating fatty tissue and connective tissue. So the skin that lines the inner two thirds and the of the ear canal, the bony portion, it's only the outer layer, the epidermis, which makes this that region of the ear extremely sensitive. And if you do make contact with the bone, it, it can be really, really uncomfortable. So sometimes less is more. Um, something that probably I've I've had to learn over the years as well. Um, that no matter how much you want to clean the ears, sometimes it's not worth the risk because by trying to get every little last speck out, you can sometimes do more damage than harm. Sometimes if there's a bit of wax on the eardrum and the patient's really still, and um, then for me it's a risk-free procedure and I'll, I'll, I'll remove that. But in this case, there's a bit of sticky stuff around the edge and to remove that, I probably would have to scrape against the canal wall and we don't want to do that. Um, patient comfort is, uh, is often most, for me anyway, uh, the most important thing when I'm uh, on my mind and when I'm removing earwax I I've had um, so because we've performed the clear wax training courses um, we do lend our ears to the other delegates so they can practice and I've had my the the bony part of my ear canal uh, collided against with some instruments and it wasn't a pleasant experience I, I know firsthand that if you're not careful it can be very uncomfortable and we, we don't want that for the patient. So this is their left ear and as soon as I removed the blockage from their right ear they suddenly noticed that their left ear was blocked. Up to this stage they felt their left ear was absolutely normal um, and that's because in comparison to the right the left ear was substantially better so they, they didn't really know any better. Earwax buildup is a benign condition, it's slow growing and it creeps up on you. It's similar to when um, patients develop presbycusis. So presbycusis is age-related hearing loss. Most patients who develop presbycusis, it can take them up to almost 10 years to realise that they are hard of hearing or, and, or they have some degree of hearing loss. And that's because that rate of deterioration occurs so slowly that it's just hard for the patient, for themselves, to notice. Um, typically, it's friends and family that notice um, that an individual ha has some degree of hearing loss. If, on the other hand, you lost your hearing over a short period of time, so, for example, within a few days or weeks or months even, you have that reference point in, in, in mind and you know that's not the way you should be hearing. So, similar with earwax, it does creep up on people. So, I've just put uh, some more medical-grade olive oil spray. The particular brand that I use, it's called Clear, uh, Declaration of um, Conflict of Interest. Um, I was recently appointed the healthcare advisor for Clear. They're our ear care uh, brand and we're working some new products as well. If you are in the UK and you wish to purchase the Clear Olive Oil Ear Spray, you can visit the website www.clearwax.co.uk. Visit our online public shop and you can purchase that and other ear care products that we, we stock. If you are a specialist, a uh, professional, and you wish to stock uh, the Clear Olive Oil Ear Spray amongst other products on your uh, for your own company. Uh, again, visit our website, select sign in, and from sign in, you can create and register an account, and that gives you access to our online trade shop. So you can buy it, it at trade prices, at higher volumes. Um, so you can see this here came out far easier. The, the, the wax and skin was a lot firmer, so it came out in big, big chunks. In fact, I would say this ear was a bit more narrow and bendy. You can see there's a bit of a prominent second bend. The eardrum's nice and healthy. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video, guys. Do take care, keep well, and speak soon. Bye.